okay, from the pro market to the consumer market. And from the, tra uh, the transition, we will see some trends and the needs. <clears throat> and say, uh, in the general term of VR, it is trying to make the experience 3D, try to make the experience immersive, natural. So there are some technologies early, in early days. It's a 3D operating system, 3D desktop. And we see uh, room-sized VR systems. Also smaller, more affordable table-sized VR systems. And now uh, the HMD-based VR systems. So back in the days, uh, early 90s, uh, the first, as I know, the 3D desktop is from Xerox Park in 91. Uh, really utilize the 3D space, immersive space, to uh, increase productivity for the uh, engineers, for the workers using the work, uh, workstations. And then later, standing on the shoulder of Xerox Park, later there uh, were attempts to making this 3D OS to the consumer space, like Microsoft, uh, Sun Microsystems, uh, and uh, Infinite 3D, a small company startup. Uh, so. All these attempts trying to make it uh, into the consumer space, but found that there's a limitation. Although the last one uh, actually is designed for uh, VR because uh, this whole system is 360 degrees. People can look around uh, as in real life. But it, it, uh, the mouse just cannot do it. It needs better interaction, can track the head. Also, it is designed for hand-free interaction. People can directly manipulate all those uh, workspace documents. But, there were no freehand interaction yet. So those technologies uh, met the bottleneck in interaction. Okay, uh, room size of VR. The systems uh, we have seen before, like uh, CAVE, is very realistic. It's using multiple projectors, also very high frequency um, trackers to track the head position using optical trackers, also the hand position using the trackers as well. But the problem is the uh, DOF, degree of freedom, is pretty low. Um, people can use it after training, but it's not expressive enough. People cannot really operate freely as in real life. And later, there were attempts to make it more interactive, more natural, cheaper system. Uh, any consumer can jump in and use. So this is a futuristic uh, IKEA demo. So people can visit the virtual uh, furniture room and can go around. So the core of this system is actually natural body language understanding. User can use natural gestures to move around, to pick up stuff, to measure a certain area on the floor, to find furnitures without any uh, controllers. And what's more is actually the system understand more about the user, it's understanding the body language. Another form of VR is uh, table-based VR. For example, this space, it has very high uh, accuracy, a very low lat latency uh, tracking system, can track the pen in six DOF, also the head pose six DOF very accurately. People can do engineering work, can do education as well. Um, but to attract general uh, consumers, there are other attempts um, to make it more interactive by adding better tracking. So this system, uh, it tracks head pose just like Oculus Rift, six stuff tracking outside in using the camera uh, hitting here. But what's the uh, add-on is the freehand tracking. The system using depth sensor and the computer vision algorithm to figure out the, how the hand uh, configuration, the hand pose. So user can not only say touch the surface, but actually can grab stuff on the 3D table, like uh, going into this shopping center and directly grab some objects and look around, examining the object. This is a virtual shopping center. So we can see that by adding understanding of the natural hand gesture is the key to making it uh, consumer level to be accepted by general public. So. Uh, now, the HMD-based VR is more ubiquitous because it can do room size the VR, the effect, can do the effect of operating on a virtual table, can do uh, 3D OS as well. So it is more ubiquitous. 
And uh, from uh, the history of the lessons, we see that the most important part of VR, besides the visualization part, actually is tracking, tracking, and tracking. And uh, when saying tracking, 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 there are different aspects of tracking. For example, uh, richness of the tracking. Not only just the position, the sixth off pose, but actually understand the body language, understand the full hand skeleton is important. The richer the tracking, the better the experience. And the quality means accuracy, latency, that still matters. And the third thing is interactivity. Uh, people may say this is outside of the tracking. No, that's true. Uh, interactivity means after tracking, how do we enable the interaction with virtual objects? Uh, how do we manipulate things? How do we get feedbacks, uh, visual feedback, even tactile feedbacks? And today for mobile VR, uh, we, we see mobile VR uh, need a lightweight interaction to make it more personal, more natural. Uh, so in mobile VR, what are the uh, interactions? Uh, 3D freehand interaction. Uh, when saying 3D actually means uh, skeleton tracking understand 26 off or more hand information, uh, 3D head tracking. And based on head tracking, we can also enable augmented reality. And then in the future, maybe also tracking of more body parts, also uh, feedback. And there are also uh, limitations or say requirements for mobile VR compared to desktop VR. First, it needs to be easy to set up so that's why inside out tracking becomes uh, in flavor because uh, users don't need to really set up the room, can pick up the device, use it immediately. Uh, second is low power consumption uh, because everything needs to be powered by the uh, mobile device. The third thing is related, the lower CPU, GPU usage because mobile CPU is only one fifth compared to desktop. Uh, the weight, the whole system, the hardware because it is on board that they need to be lightweight. So how to solve all these problems um, is the key. Oh, here is a demo of um, 3D hand tracking system we have developed. It used, on, used on board camera systems and also using the processing power from the mobile CPU, GPUs. And this is the end result, it's a demo showing that the user can play with uh, educational software, understanding the planets. The system can understand hand positioning 3D, also the skeleton information. So user can really naturally uh, to do uh, immediate interaction with virtual objects. And this is a mini game. Uh, can give user superpowers, stop the bullet. And this is a demo of a mini operating system User can using, e use easy gestures to uh, flip applications, select applications, control application or media feed playback. And behind the scene, uh, the technology is tracking all the skeleton joints, not only position, but also orientation. So this is a pretty hard problem because if you look at the, the upper left is the raw image captured by the camera. Uh, in many things, the hands, the fingers are occluded by the palm. It is very hard to figure out using conventional computer vision algorithms. So it must require uh, machine learning based algorithms to figure out all those hard cases like occlusions uh, between the hands as well. And the recognize the bone structure is corresponding to the biological bone structure. That helps uh, to skin the model. This is uh, raw data, but later developers need to skin the hand model to make it natural. So getting the right bone structure is very important. Um, then the head pose tracking. Head pose tracking using inside out. Um, people um, can use SLAM based technologies uh, MU fusion based technologies or some other companies using RF based uh, tracking mechanisms. So this is a result of combining the head tracking with uh, augmented reality. 
and combined with hand tracking as well. So in this demo, people really create stuff uh, in the air, in the real space. I'll say that um, if only using the camera-based system, the SLAM uh, still have certain limitations in the room because different room environment sometimes are very hard to track. And there are RGBD-based tracking algorithm combined with IMU give better result, uh, more stable result in dif uh, difficult room uh, configurations. Or well, here, user can also quickly switch from uh, AR to VR and switch back as well. So this seamless transition between the four corners of mixed reality also can enable future interesting applications as well. So um, if we look at the key challenges in VR, there may be nine or more challenges from the display optics problems to rendering problems, all the way to tracking of the head pose, tracking of the hand. And in the end, also the application layer, how to generate uh, lifelike avatars, how to generate virtual environment that's also lifelike, like the real world. Uh, we can see the trend uh, in VR is uh, going through simple signal processing to computer vision, all the way to machine learning AI problems. Right now, we, from the head tracking and hand tracking, we already see the transition into solving those machine learning problems. And uh, well, uh, so you says we are, uh, we will start the developers program uh, later uh, this month uh, because we think solving all those problems is very hard. So uh, many ha has is better than just one. Uh, so we'll start the developer program first with hand tracking. So yeah, that's all, thank you. Uh,